Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Hawkeye Freefall number five. Uh, first of all, it's Sunday. I'm probably not gonna upload this till tomorrow. It's gotta be weird when I show my Indiegogos, but then I release the videos out of order when I recorded them, so you're watching the, the numbers go up and down. But this is a Sunday, which means I kind of uh, tally up everything on my uh, spreadsheets. And one thing I didn't notice, you know, probably because Pandemic is on two different Indiegogos, but, um, you know, the price is a lot lower and there's no extras or, you know, pinups or anything like that. So obviously, I think the thing's only made like 73,000. I didn't realize it was at like 2,300 backers. This is very solidly a success. My, my delineation of success or failure for myself is 2,000. Um, I was actually talking to someone and they were they were saying, you know, so-and-so is, is, is nervous to do crowdfunding because they're going to, they think they're going to fail. And I said, you need to establish what success is for you and then, you know, go for that. Obviously, a million dollars is going to be a success for almost anyone unless your expenses are 1.1 million. Uh, it has to do with profits and, you know, growing a base and things like that. Um, but uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, Expendables Go to Hell and Pandemic are all out. So um, last Wednesday, Marvel came out with actual comics, uh, not in stores, which I've heard the stores are open, but I looked at the list, the, the list of stuff that uh, was in stores and it was not worth going even to a comic store that at the time was a block and a half away from me. It, and I literally just, I drove past it a couple times. I was like, eh, it's not really worth it. But Marvel released some of their books digital only. So they got stuck in this weird, jeez, it's amazing how much how much the uh, industry has damaged itself so as to not displease Brian Hibbs. So Brian Hibbs is a prominent retailer in San Francisco who he has a column called Tilting at Windmills. And he was always very, very against digital comics being cheaper or more attractive than physical comics, which I understand to a point, but then also it's, you know, it's a TV dinner versus a meal at a restaurant. You know, you can get, you know, whatever, roast beef and mashed potatoes at both places. I have grown to like some aspects of reading comics digitally. But for the main part, I still hate it. Like, it has to be on my tablet. It can't be on my phone. And even on my tablet, there's some issues. So, um, Marvel and basically every other company, they, they got locked into this ridiculous deal that... Digital comics will cost the same amount as physical comics and they will come out on the same day. Now they're kind of trapped in it, you know, bleeding cool and everyone will just pillory them for a year if they ever decide to change their mind and say, hey, we need, we need money. So they've had to do this, this end run where they say, well, we've canceled the print edition, so now this is digital only, which completely cuts the Brian Hibbs's out, but they can't complain because they're using Brian Hibbs's rule. You can't have two versions come out the same day for different prices. So now they only have, now it's only digital. Now, I wasn't aware of Hawkeye Freefall doing that bad, but I looked at Comicron for 20, uh, uh, March uh, 2020, and I mean, no pin, pun intended, it is in Freefall. It's at 12,988, and that's for a character that every Mima in the country, every Mima knows Hawkeye. And like, it's selling below Daphne Byrne number three <laughs> and X-Ray Robot number one. Like, it's bad. Although I've heard Hawkman is good, and that's selling just as poorly. And then another book that's actually kind of okay is uh, Ant-Man, and that's down here at 10,000. Uh, I would say that the similarities between Ant-Man and uh, Hawkeye Freefall is both of them have well-liked characters, but in the portrayal, they are effeminate, ineffectual um, goofball, hipster, idiots. Now, this is where it gets so confusing. I have read, I think I missed one of the issues. I read, uh, all the other ones. So Hawkeye has been Hawkeye as Hawkeye and Pizza Dog. Like this ineffectual Brooklyn hipster, not exactly a wimp because he's still an Avenger, but like he's a hipster doofus. Um, he's always getting clowned by everyone, which is complete 180 from, you know, 40 years of his history. Um, but, I don't know, what's his name? Matt Fraction made this popular 10 years ago, so I guess we're stuck with this portrayal. Um, and then all of a sudden, 
we get one of the most extreme examples of Django Unchained Syndrome I've ever seen in comics. Django Unchained Syndrome is when you have a character who you spend two hours going through intricate subplots and character growths and disguises and gambits and all of this stuff. And then we find out that he can fight 30 men at once. So why did we go through all of that shit? At the, like the last 20 minutes, we find out that Django Unchained, uh, he can fight like freaking, yeah, I know I'm saying Unchained like that's his last name. Um, <laughs> give me your ID, Mr. Unchained, comma, Django. <laughs> um, uh, if he can fight all these people, then what was all the rigmarole of the last four issues? So uh, we start off and it's, complicated but he's Ronin again pretending not to be Ronin there's a scroll in the mix but whatever it's Hawkeye he's dressed as Ronin and he's he's basically messing fools up he's taking on the kingpin he's uh, obviously I can't show all the pages he's going after uh, the mob he's threatening dirty cops he's being actually pretty darn badass and then <laughs> Oh my God, this is infuriating. Why? Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Please look at the screen. It's 2020. And I'm gonna have to reload. Yes, I know there's an app, but it's 2020, it's a browser. I should get full functionality out of this digital comic that I paid for. I didn't pay a lot for it. Oh, so now I can see, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to actually do what I uh, told you to do. So, you know, he's uh, he's being a badass. He goes to this, um. He's like, uh, he's clowning. What is this guy's name? The Red Hood? It's not the Red Hood. What is this guy's name? Dr. Evil Man? Whatever. Um, so he's burning down his ships. He's, uh, you know, giving out his private number. He's beating up his goons. And he goes to a fight club. This one's pretty uh, badass. He has to earn a bunch of money. So he bets on himself to fight all these, uh, you know, bruisers. Um, and uh, for complicated plot uh, shenanigans, he needs to do that. And then, um, well, let's cut to it. He's threatening the uh, person I'm calling Mr. Evil Man because I forgot his name. And then we get this shit. So in classic superhero tropey stuff, Clint has missed a date. And the woman is pissed because she feels she's been stood up. So he's apologizing. And then Spider-Man comes out. Spider-Man is basically... What was that? Was it Gillette where the guy was like wanting to talk to the girl and then that guy came out of the barbershop and put him put his hand on the dude's stomach it was like not cool, bro. That's basically what Spider-Man's doing. So then um, Captain America shows up and uh, it's very like I said, it's weird because they've been doing Hawkeye as hipster doofus, but then also Hawkeye as a guy who can take on Kingpin hood evil guy. <laughs> um uh bullseye uh various different gangs all at the same time so it's like but then captain america shows up and he's like a sulky teen getting luck like look at the body language on him he's a sulky snotty teen getting lectured by dad um so this is where it's just so then his not even his girlfriend comes out and she starts yelling at captain america then she does the shut up i'm talking to the the lead character of the book. Look at the body language. He's he's a little boy, and that's his mommy. His mommy starts poking Captain America in the chest. Look at Captain America's, oh, I'm sorry, woman I don't know who's emotionally blackmailing me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Look at this. This is Captain America hanging his head in shame. And then look at bitch-ass Hawkeye, a little boy behind his mommy girlfriend. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Tell him, Mom. Uh, and then they leave, and he's like, Listen, you didn't have to do that. It saved my ass and was sexy as hell. What was sexy as hell as being emasculated by your mommy girlfriend, who then breaks up with you? It's not. This is goodbye. Of course it's goodbye. What woman's going to date a freaking 35-year-old toddler? Stupid. So now we get back into, like, the classic... Oh, your sidekicks, I don't give it away, but what what am I supposed to go back to? After finally in issue five, he actually does like a half episode or half issue of being badass. 
And then he's literally like hiding behind the hem of his mommy girlfriend. What is it? What am I supposed to come back for? Is she gonna make him freaking, I don't know, pop tarts and freaking, you know, sing, sing him a freaking lullaby so he falls asleep? What the hell? What is this? Who, what is your audience? Effeminate Williamsburg hipsters who dream of one day taking a free karate class? What is it? Who, who is your audience? Obviously, it's not that many people. If you can do a sac, you can be a sacrifice play. I mean, literally, this is it's it's basically a stealth cancellation. They're not even going to print it anymore. Uh, but they need a little bit of revenue. I mean, it's not much. It's like a freaking dollar. <laughs> no, no, this is a full price one. No, I paid. Yeah, I had to pay full price for this one. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so I paid. Yeah, I stupidly paid like three dollars and sixty cents for this. Man. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot this. So yesterday, so th they have this community page. It's kind of like Facebook on YouTube. So my buddy sends me this and he's like, settle a bet for me. Is Wolverine on his knees? By that, it means he's kind of kneeling and then like in a relaxed kneel. Somebody called it the lazy church kneel where you start, you kneel, but then you're kind of like sitting on your heels. Uh, is he kneeling, squatting, which would require him, you know, uh, being in his toes, like his, his butt and his shins would not be on the ground. It would just be like, you know, the toes of his boots. Or is he sitting like on a bench or something like that? Now, I had always, always assumed that he was kneeling, like, like that someone said, a, a lazy church kneel where you're actually kind of like sitting on your own legs, kind of. Uh, but your, your shins are on the ground. But then I looked... At the hints of, thank you, cool, thanks. Um, uh, the hints of the the bending, and it could it could have been anything. It could be him sitting on a bench. It actually could be him squatting. Although people said that his body weight was not forward enough for him to be squatting, or it could be what I always thought it was kneeling. So then, you know, I, I put it up on this. People said, why didn't you do a poll? You can't do a picture and a poll. You can do a link and a poll, but I wanted to show the image. So, but when you got to the, uh, the answers, it was completely inconclusive. Somebody's, you know, some say he's sitting, uh, uh, I got a lot of sitting, I got a lot of kneeling, and I got some squat. It was, it was inconclusive. So then somebody says, you know, the black and white line art should answer this question. Um, but if you look at this, you go, well, it's solid black. Like, you're not going to be able to get a hint. But you will, because... A printed book, especially back then, was not a literal photograph of the line art. What it would do is it would take anything that was black or blackish and make it solid black. Uh, so when you find the line art, it's very clear. Can you see it? I'll put my uh, cursor. You can see where the, the shin is right there. And then you can even see where the boot was right there. So yes, he is doing a lazy church kneel, um, which if I remember in the store, story, he's next to a gravestone, so that makes even more sense. But that was a little fun bit of, uh, I don't know, comics trivia. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogos. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. So we got uh, Jawbreakers, Grand Bazaar, Spendables Go to Hell, and Pandemic Comic Book. This is the second of two Indiegogos. It's a long story. Short version is I fell asleep. I fell asleep. Um, uh, so uh, thanks for that. And I'll have new comic, old comic reviews, and comic book industry analysis up all this week. Thanks. Bye.